I didn't think I'd be ever having to make this video as far as it's already in the title. I'll admit straight ahead, this is already a planned video. Like, it's, it's I'm not filming this on the day of the funeral or even the day after. Today is actually currently a Monday. Funeral is Saturday. So, two days afterwards. I was tempted, but. I want to look nice in the video, and I don't want to wear no regular clothing, so I want to wear what I actually wore in the funeral, minus the tie and, you know, whatever else. Well, as it is in the title of the video, um, my grandfather, Steve Jones, or as I called him, Poppy, me and all my other cousins, and pretty much everyone that was <clears throat> my age or younger. Me, Denver, and Levi kind of started that a little bit. Or, yeah, we're the ones that kind of like, once they started, started it because Nana wanted us, Nana meaning his wife, Wanda, wanted us to call him Poppy. That was the name that we wanted, that she wanted us to give him, and it, it kind of stuck, so... We kind of always called him that, you know. Didn't call him Steve. They never didn't call him Grandpa. Didn't want, didn't want to make him sound. <laughs> didn't want to make him sound old. That was the last thing we ever wanted to do. So Poppy was it. That's where it ended. Started and ended, and it just stuck. So Poppy. He uh, suffered a uh, heart attack. And uh, he passed away shortly afterwards. And though I don't plan on getting emotional in this video because, trust me, I, I got emotional. So I don't need to get into that too much. I want to be professional. I want to be suitable for this video. I don't want to look like a slob. Even though that would make sense if I started tearing up a little bit, but I'm going to try not to. He passed away at age 70. He was just doing regular work, and uh, he just kind of just came out of nowhere. None of us had this, saw this coming. It's not like he was like sick or anything. Anything that was actually was, you know, hindering him really at all. Like, that same week... The weekend before, he was bowling with other family members, and he seemed to have enjoyed his time. Um, but I regret not going. I mean, how's that fair? How's I supposed to know? It was a day I worked, and my mom went, who... Her father is Steve. She's his daughter. So, she wanted to actually go on that alone. And because the family members came together, um, I think Cameron went also. Only me and Dad didn't go. We both worked that day. We were tired. We didn't want to get back out. My dad just got done putting in a 10-hour shift, you know. And I worked that day, too. I didn't get home. I, I, I worked mornings. So I didn't get home until 3. I know you. it's like, well, you could have still went because the event of that bowling event was late that day. Like, late evening around 6 or 7. -ish. I could have still went, but my excuse was tired. That was my excuse. Um, last time I saw him was Christmas. That was the last time I ever saw him. Face to face. So yeah, won't be the same going over to their house anymore because we they held a lot of mostly it was like Christmas. They had get-togethers and early on earlier 
year like years ago, we used to go over there a lot, especially when I was younger, when I was like a kid, you know, before I was even a teenager. Uh, we used to go there a lot. Um, and it was, you know, customary almost to go. And she used to go on, I get a job. Dad has to do 10 hours now. Didn't have to use, didn't, didn't even used to have to do 10 hours every day. Of course, there's, 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 there's a couple of jobs where he had to do longer shifts. But just that with, you know, with, especially with me having a job, it kind of hinders on all of us at the same time going over there. There's been plenty of times where my mom went over to their house. I mean, Dad couldn't go because I was still working. Dad would be home, but then he wouldn't be able to go because he'd have to wait for me to get home, even though I have a key to the house. They didn't want to leave me alone by myself in the house. And Dad wanted to stay behind because I couldn't go. Because that worked. Our days were they would normally would have gone, but I worked, and it kind of messed up plans for everyone to go. Uh, well, mostly for my dad, my mom, and probably Cameron. Still, would they would Cameron would definitely would always would go with mom. Dad would always would stay behind for me. I hate going to funerals. I'll be honest. It just I know we all say can agree with that. You always hate going to funerals. Just my God, they are really the most depressing thing. It's the most depressing event ever. Nothing compares. It really doesn't. I mean, you're just someone being alive all the time. You know, and just... You just never expected to see this coming. Anytime soon. We, d we didn't see this coming at all. Like I said, he wasn't sick. Nothing was really hindering him at all. They just kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know if it's... If it's age... It could be. I mean, 70. I mean, you can have a heart attack at any time, even in your 50s. And I shouldn't say that because my dad's in his 50s. You can have them in your 40s. You can kind of relatively have them at any time in your life. But the, obviously, the odds and in my age group are is so small. You never hear cases of people in my age group having heart attacks. That's something that you get when you're older. As you get older, the odds of that increase exponentially, and so like it seems like if it's not cancer, heart attacks are like the almost one of the next more common, you know, ways to go how people pass away. Heart attacks, cardiac arrest, you know, if it ain't cancer, if it's not like an illness, usually a, a heart attack or a cardiac arrest, usually due to old age or strokes. My other... Yeah, I'll consider him a grandfather. He was father to my dad, Lawrence. His funeral, he passed away three years ago. 2017. I forgot what month it was. It's been three years, but it'll be three years this coming around the summertime, I believe, or springtime, or whichever, which, you know, that one obviously, obviously bothered me, because, well, it's bothered my dad. So, yeah, he was a grandfather. Um, I never called him grandpa either. His dad was also a big Steeler fan. The only times I can remember. And it's really just one time that I can remember in somewhat recent history when someone outside of our intermediate family, meaning like, you know, my parents or my brother, ever saw me actually outright cry and break down, like uncontrollably. And this is, do you know, this is when I was a lot younger, a lot younger. I'm talking, I was maybe 14, 13. <laughs> this was a while ago. So that's an 11. I just see that. So that's nine years ago. I'm 21 now. I'm 12. Maybe going on 13 around this time. So I don't think we're even quite a teenager yet. Maybe I am a teenager. I don't know. I, I, I can't think right now. Um, it was a, his, his dad was over at our house, our old house, at the Bumblebee house. And we were watching a Pittsburgh game. It's a playoff game. They were playing the Denver Broncos. Tim Tebow. If you know football, you know what happened. Long story short, grinded out game, went into overtime. Pittsburgh came back, tied it up, went into overtime. 
first play in overtime, Tim Tebow simply throws a little simple slant route to Demarius Thomas, scored a touchdown, and I break down like a little bitch. Uncontrollably, because when he scored a touchdown, it was over. And when I saw him start to streak down the field, there I didn't see any Steeler catch him. He was just break. He was just all out speed. He was just all out at that point. That he was obviously he was the fastest guy on the field, and it showed. And I broke down. And his dad was there to witness it. And he, yeah, he comforted me. It was just you know, it's just a game. It's just it's one game at the end of the world. But he's obviously a diehard Steeler fan. He's a the reason why my dad's a Steeler fan is because of him. Because I'm a Steeler fan because of my dad. So it's a current trend of fathers influencing their son of who to root for in the in the world of football. But Pittsburgh's got the biggest fan base in the world, so it's kind of a trend, you know. Pittsburgh's got the biggest fan base in the world. Like they probably are the best, most well-traveled team in the world. Every time they travel anywhere, half the fans in the stadium now these days are Pittsburgh fans, it seems like. It's ridiculous. Of course, they got a lot more when they probably were the Killer Bees, when they had Ben, Brown, Bell, you know, when they were really big. I know I'm, I'm cutting off track. I just, just talking about how his dad's funeral, you know, bothered him because it, what's, what's unfortunate, I didn't get to see his dad enough. I don't. I didn't get. I didn't go to see his his side of the family a lot because usually whenever we have a family get together, usually we go to my mom's side, not my dad's side. Mom's side is the side we always normally will always visit. Not my father's side, and that hurt our chances of being able to see his dad more. Poppy, Steve, I saw quite a bit, quite a lot, early on in my child in my life, and all the way throughout, all the way until I was 21. Now. But it, it, it bothered me in a different way than it did his father's funeral. In the end, they're all, you know what, I, they're all the same. It hurt real bad. And seeing them just be so unbelievably stiff. I'm not going to make this video too long. Because I've already went through the emotions of it all. Truly, so... I don't really have anything left to say. This little, you know, right here is obviously a symbol of letting you know that I was a uh, Paul Bear here. Um, this ain't the first time I was chosen. In fact, the last three funerals in a row I went to that I know of Steve's, Lawrence's, and uh, Mom Fannin's. I won't get into all the details of all three funerals, but I was a Paul Bear in all three of them. So it was nothing new. You know, I, I kind of felt like I was going to be chosen along with me, Devin and Levi, since we're the closest grandchildren of, them all, of us all. Um, Shane, his, his only Steve's son. Uh, my dad. And even Cameron and uh, Kyler, who was Shane, who's Shane's best friend. We were all the uh, Paul Bears, and uh, it's always honored to be one because it's, it feels like you're one of the handful of men in the world that get to represent that person, and it's a huge honor you're representing for him. Yeah, sure time heals all wounds. It's just, it, it depresses me every time I think about the times whenever I came over, seeing him in his chair in the living room, watching TV. I miss whenever you'd maybe accidentally get in front of the TV and he'd be watching a sporting program. He was speaking of sports and sports program he'd be watching. He would also he was also a, uh, a somewhat minor Steeler fan. He wasn't as committed. He kind of followed teams that were currently big or huge. He's kind of a I hate to say it, but he may have been a somewhat minor bandwagon of a fan. Um 
I think he was maybe in the end a true more of a cult flint cult fan, I'm not entirely sure. Well, it makes sense we're in Indy, so it makes sense to be a cult fan. More. He might have been. He might have been a slightly bigger cult fan. That's perfectly fine with me, obviously. Um, not everyone's got to be a Steeler fan. There's already enough of us already. <laughs> Every time you get him from the TV, you know, he'd always be like, move, I can't see, whatever. You know, he'd be like a little... thing that he would always would do. If you just got in front of the TV, you know, he would always let you know about it. And he was, him and his son always went fishing together. Or on days, maybe from work, he would go out and fish himself just because it's something he'd do. It's a hobby of his that he practically made a profession out of because he competed in a lot of tournaments of fishing. I don't know what they're called, but uh, he was really competitive when it came to that. And he got Shane into it a lot. Now Shane is, you know, very into it also. I just really hope he's up there, you know, watching over us now from a supernatural standpoint with God in heaven. If you personally ask me, do I believe in God? Do I believe in the supernatural? My best response is yes. And this is the reason why. When I see everything, the way how it is, life, everything. Everything, how humans react, interact. Animals, whatever, how everything is the way they are, nature, whatever, the world, the planet, the universe, planets, stars. I have to believe that's not all here for no reason. I have to believe this guy be a power above everything. A, su a supernatural being above it all that created it all. I can't believe all of this is here for no reason. Everything down to the atom. It's just, it's all here, and I'm like, I can't believe that it's all here for nothing. There's nothing else afterwards. I can't believe that when we die, we just go into a void, and we're never more. You know? Where we just die, it's just, like, turn off the light switch, it's, you're done. No more memory, no more nothing. I can't believe that. I can't. I have to believe there's something else afterwards. Like, I believe that we do all have a soul, and it's a supernatural part of us, and I have to believe there's something else afterwards. I can't believe that this is it. I, I know, you just never know, but I, I have to believe that there has to be something else after this. It doesn't mean that I can't enjoy my time on this world and enjoy the loved ones that I have still with me. And I do. Right. Try and cheers. I should do better. Should treat my parents better. I know. Sometimes I give my dad the cold shoulder. So especially when I get home from work. I'm always I that is when I'm in my most shittiest moods is when I'm coming home straight from work before I get my shower. I'm in my most shittiest mood right there. When I get out of the shower, my face mess and I'm all clean, I get my more comfortable clothes on. I'm in a much better mood. I now feel awake, I feel relaxed, I feel in a much better mood. Much more talkative mood, I'm more approachable. I will have to admit that. I'm not perfect, none of us are. All I have to say is, you know, uh, in the end I hope there is something else after, after this. I hope Steve's up there, you know, hoping to see us one day. We hope to see him one day. I didn't make a post on Facebook, and I'll show it to you right here, that I made on Facebook. Kind of try and show my best way of how much I miss him, and there's only so much words can do. It's... My best memory is probably when they came to my graduation party, 
and my graduation itself. They came to both the party and when I graduated. They were there and when I think about it more, it, it just means so much to me. It is, it's just a big, important part, piece of your life when you graduate or, on anything. Even if it's just high school, which everyone graduates from. It's still a, 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 gar a gargantuan part of your life. And I'm, I'm so glad I have it on camera. I got my dad to film it. And it's so huge. Do I wish I filmed more that day? Yeah, of course. I wish I actually managed to bring my camera down there and I managed to film everyone. Hey, everybody, you're in my video. Yo, let's see what's up. I probably should have done that instead. I should have actually held onto my camera and be like, hey, guys, what's up? And film my fellow classmates because, dear God, I actually truly do miss them. I do really miss my class of 2017. I really miss school because um, it's something that I did for practically almost all my life. Most of my life, like 90% of my life, I was going to school. Started from preschool and ended in your 12th grade. And it's closing a big chapter on your life, in a way. And I miss it. I'm nostalgic of that. I'm, I like to reminisce of that particular past a lot. And I know I'm getting off topic. You know, this is supposed to be a... a, a I want to make this video about... Poppy, about Stephen having to cope with having to live life without him. It's gonna be rough for a while, but uh, we'll all have to get through it in our own different ways. Yeah, I don't know why you mentioned my graduate. <laughs> yeah, he was there. Like I said, it's a big part, and I'm glad he was there. I think Ashley was there also. Yeah, I believe she was. Ashley, Stephen, Wanda, and of course my parents and Cameron. I'm glad that he managed to see his two, his two children, all his children practically, see them get married, especially Shane and Ashley, being able to. Either walk Ashley, you know, down the walkway to be married and got to witness Shane get married to both of them, so that was a big thing that he got to see them get married, and that's, that's important. I'm, I'm glad he got to witness that. There'd be something missing, in my opinion, in his life of not being able to see your children get married. That's... That should be something that every parent should have a privilege to say they got to witness before their time. Before their time has come to an end. I feel like every parent should have a privilege to see their children get married. In every shape or form. To sum this all up, he'll be married. He'll be missed. I'm gonna miss going holiday with him. With when we're all together. That's always fun. Well, no longer go camping, even though we've not really done that in quite a while. At least I haven't, and I hate to admit that. Life, shit gets in the way, and that's an awful excuse, but it's the truth. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be missed. When he died, part of me died. That's all I have to say about that. That's it, I'm talking, I'll sum it up.